So everyone should be back from yes. the breakout rooms now. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, and welcome back from, uh, from your break. If, uh, I hope you had time to stretch your legs. Um, so now we'll uh, talk about social coding and licensing and uh, citation. So first I will introduce myself. So I'm Anne, I'm, uh, mostly now working for uh, the Nordic uh, uh, infrastructure collaboration. I'm based in Oslo in, uh, in Norway. And uh, this part I will co-teach with Radovan, uh, which hopefully is here. And we'll try to, um, Radovan will help me to keep track uh, on the lesson and uh, ask questions as a discussion. Hope you are ready, Radovan. <laughs> Um, so first, uh, about uh, social coding, I will talk more, more into details about what we mean by social coding, but um, as a first maybe definition, what we can say is uh, it's uh, some kind of collaboration, very often informal collaboration. Um, uh, but we'll see that um, it has a lot of norms or like unknown or un written um, norms on how to interact with each other. And many of these you have seen already, uh, which is uh, what you did last week with the Git collaboration. You did a bit of social coding already, but now let's go back to it and uh, look into more details. Um, here we take the, the point of view of a researcher. So we'll uh, really, believes that researcher, most of the time, they understand very well uh, what uh, means sharing when we talk about papers. And now we want to uh, take this point of view and ex extend it to a software. So uh, if you are a researcher or when you are a researcher, um, your main objective is to have a maximum visibility uh, and you want uh, your paper to, uh, to be read and to be cited and you want more work to be done from what you have uh, elaborated initially. Uh, and this is uh, uh, usually what we want with software. Um, but how do we proceed with software and what is really different? So before doing anything, I will uh, we'll take a bit of the, we'll have a discussion with HackMD. I'm not sure how it goes with uh, so many people, but let's try it out. Um, I will pass first some question, maybe it, to help it out. I'm not sure it, we can write a lot. I'm already pasting. Oh, thank you, Radovan. And also a quick message to Anne. Yes. Uh, I will leave Zoom and rejoin because I don't see your screen share, but I think it's just my own, just me. So I'll be oh, back yeah. in like okay. a few seconds. No problem. So I hope everyone else uh, can see my screen. Yes. 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 Okay, so we'll take a few minutes, so like five minutes to answer to this question. And the first question is, did you ever share your code? And if yes, what motivated you? So you don't have to write too many uh, texts, but at least uh, um, really what was your main motivation when you did it and if you did it, and if you haven't done it, you can write no, and uh, it's, it's perfectly all right. And I see like plus one, very good, if you agree on, on the uh, existing statement, you can add a plus one to avoid the repetition. And then we have uh, the next question, which is um, uh, some uh, reason why uh, you would like to share your script, your code and data a bit more um, detailed and why you don't want to share or why you cannot share. So uh, here we would like to have a bit your inputs on this. And I will give you like five minutes. One's coming in. Yes, and I think I, we are. Maybe we can start to look at, uh, at them, Radovan. Yes. I think these are fantastic points. It's wonderful when like participants create create the lesson that we are for, for us. Yes, I like it. It's very relaxing as an instructor, actually. Um, I think you now what, uh, what is really nice, I see many yes, and I'm very happy to, to see that many people have already tried to share codes. Um, I think when we started Code Refinery, we had many more no than yes. So it's a good thing. 
it's very positive. It means uh, people are um, increasingly willing to share their code. Uh, I like the motivation to get credit for it. It's uh, exactly what we are talking uh, here in this lesson. And uh, if you are sharing, it means you are more visible. So you can get more credit about uh, your work and your software and not only your papers. Um, making uh, uh, it useful, um, have it along the paper. And we'll see that now many papers are asking to have software available along the, uh, the paper. Yeah, also transparency. Yes. Reusability, citability. So these are. That's right. Anything else uh, I forget? More citation, reproducible research, which mm -hmm. is also what we have mentioned. A uh, very good point to make sure I have access to it after the end of a postdoc. I think that's a very good point, which we'll, uh, we will come back to it when we'll talk about license, licenses. Um, yeah, there are a few more good points on the second question. I realized okay. that the first two questions are maybe a bit similar. Um, yes, that's right, but that's fine. Um, yeah. And yeah, also great points. One yeah, which one do you want me to highlight, Radovan? Uh, from the reasons not to share. So yeah. I noted something that came up several times was competitive strategic advantage. Uh, that's the first one, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, this one. Then also embarrassment, fear of mm. showing something incomplete, imperfect, uh, not wanting to give wrong expectations. So I think that's also about like expectations about future support and also legal concerns. So what, uh, what can we say about this? I mean, like uh, um, uh, this discussion about uh, keeping a, um, an advantage over your competitor. I have seen it many times, but I have also seen the uh, counter argument that people are putting it open to, um, to make sure their competitor are aware of what they do and to show off their knowledge. Um, I see in academia, this is really uh, mostly the other way around that people are trying to keep this advantage. Uh, I, I, I understand it a bit more now, uh, since most uh, people in academia don't have permanent position. Um, they are competing for their survival. Yes, uh, and it could also be a small group competing with a large group. Exactly. And then yes. the large group can take it over and take it from there. So I, I also understand the worries. And this, uh, as an advice, I don't know, uh, uh, Radovan, what kind of advice you would give, but usually what I say is, uh, yes, if you want, you can make it private at the beginning and then share it afterwards, but put everything in place so that you don't have uh, to make any additional work when it's ready to, to be uh, published. So when we see uh, published and the sharing, it doesn't mean you have to share from D1. It's maybe the ideal situation, but we understand that it's not always possible. And another good advice I got, uh, which I try to follow, is prepare that you will share it at some point or somebody will share it at some point. So even though it may be private now, I think it's good to remember both for the communication that at some point it may become public. Yes. Uh, and there are also some reasons sometimes it cannot be public. Uh, if uh, This is what we will see later on with licenses. For instance, you are not allowed to... Uh, to share it. Uh, about the embarrassment, about, uh, about it being not properly structured, etc. Uh, I have seen it many times too. Um, I, I have written crappy codes many times and I have shared it. Um, I never had this embarrassment. Uh, most of the time, if you find something online and this is already, uh, I mean, you can reuse it, it can help you. If, uh, if someone is criticizing uh, the style, uh, without any uh, constructive argument, um, then you, you you should pass and you say, okay, sorry, this is what I have done and I, I don't have more time. If you want to improve it, that's fine. And that's usually what I got. I got suggestion on how to improve, which is great. But um, don't worry too much about it. Um, you can only get uh, positive inputs on this. Uh, and if you have any uh, negative uh, in, I mean, negative comments on your on your codes and style. 
Um, we'll see that we can uh, try to reduce this by having a code of conduct. Uh, and this is part of the contributing guideline we will discuss later. Um, anything else uh, we should, uh, I think we have probably go over. What about the comment with the bugs? That's, uh, that, oh, that's sorry, I don't see it. Yeah, I was surprised. Yes, where is it? Uh, if there are unknown bugs in the code, but then the counter argument is maybe, wouldn't that be a good thing? Someone finding your bug for you. Yes, if there are bugs and error, I um, definitely want to share my code uh, for this reason, because most of the time when I write code, I don't see bugs uh, and I, I don't uh, highlight the bugs because I always use my code in the exact way I have written it. So uh, I, I, I know it so well. Um, I never try to encounter any problems with it. Well, if I give it to someone else, they usually uh, don't know the internals. They will try it out for their own purposes and they will find many bugs. And that's fantastic because this is how we can improve the code. So yes, yeah, thank you Tor for this. Uh, this is very good. Uh, so don't be scared by bugs and error. Um, what I have heard many times and recently that a, a PhD told me, yeah, yes, you, you do it, but after I have uh, my defense. <laughs> so the, she, she was super worried. I, I look at it before. Uh, which I can understand because this is very stressful, but overall, this is really positive to get some inputs. And I'm really happy when someone look at the, the code and gave me some inputs. Um, anything else I have forgotten or anyone want to add something? Yeah, I think it's just a really good point also on Zoom chat that um like the embarrassment about sharing that code, which I really understand, but like the problematic code is the code that is never shared. Yes. So I think the, the barrier to share should be smaller. And I was also worried first time, but then I realized that nobody actually minds and nobody criticizes and it's okay. Uh, yeah. And I, I, in fact, this is what we're, we are discussing right now. This is part of this social coding, uh, a bit like the norm behind the social coding. Uh, is, is not uh, to embarrass people and is really to welcome uh, new developers. And there is a lot of uh, um, friendly environment uh, behind this uh, social coding uh, for open software. So it's, uh, it's, it's the opposite. I have been very welcome normally, even if I had written very crappy codes at some point. And people were very nice uh, explaining step-by-step step on how to improve it. Um, Yes, let's see. Um, now we have done this. I, I will not go to this, into this part. I think we have highlighted most of uh, what we uh, have discussed. I mean, you have found most of them or did I forget something, Radovan? I think so too. I think really, I think the exact same points came up, if not even better. So what we, yeah. what we also now really happy about is having the second D for later so that we can feed it back into the lesson. Yes, and your inputs are usually uh, is much better than what we can come up in, uh, in the lesson itself because it's based on your own experience. So it's great, so thank you. Um, yes, now um, we'll see a bit uh, more how, uh, what, what means uh, sharing and uh, how we can uh, uh, make it possible. Uh, so there are some, a few, few things we have to do to allow um, other to reuse or code. So I, here we have written sharing is uh, uh, caring. And this is uh, really, I, I really believe this is true. Uh, when you have a code, uh, code is not a, a dead piece of uh, text. It's alive. Uh, it uh, lives with a, a software environment to execute the code. So um, people other can reuse your code. They can make some improvement and you can also uh, get some inputs in your uh, code uh, from others and they can cite your software. So this is really this ecosystem, which I think is uh, uh, we are referring to social coding. Uh, one thing I, I have myself very often uh, said that uh, I did all the groundwork and they get to do the interesting science. Um, Yes, it's, it is sometimes a, uh, the belief you can have if you spend a lot of time trying to develop the code 
uh, and then you don't you really have time to to make use of the, of it. Uh, but at the end, uh, you should see like the big picture, which is more uh, improving the state of the art and contributing and be cited uh, because you have uh, uh, developed a, a software that is widely used by others. I think it should be a very gratifying and even more than uh, uh, writing a single paper. So sharing code and encouraging uh, derivative work, and this is what we will talk with uh, licenses, uh, it really can boost your academic impact. And now this is more and more uh, recognized in academia. But also adding to this, like the more invisible the code, the more difficult to get credit yes. in citations. If it's, if it's like a library, which is used by a library, which is used by a library, it may be like invisible to the user who's really using it at the end and getting credit for it can be challenging. Yes, it's true. I mean, and, uh, I mean, to be frankly honest, I don't think this is really uh, well established in academia. So we still have to work on this. Um, and uh, we are relying on uh, all of you to try to, to uh, improve this, uh, this part too. And uh, when you use a software in your paper, remember to cite the person. Uh, and the package, if this is Python package, it's uh, quite important. Um, if we uh, look at the journal policy for uh, as a motivation for sharing, um, it's usually seen as a must. Um, and I have seen some comments earlier saying, if you want to publish in, uh, for instance, in Nature, you need to put everything in uh, in in your with your along with your paper, like the code and the scripts and the plots and the data. So. Um, it's true on the paper. Uh, recently, we have looked at many uh, papers. So I, I looked at uh, what is done in the in climate, um, and along the paper, you have a lot of source code, data, etc. It's accessible, uh, but it's not always reusable. Um, so it's another thing which is a, a bit more. It's more than uh, putting the data and the software that we need to do, and this is what we have seen in the previous uh, lesson. Uh, unfortunately, now we still see less, I mean, we see less and less comment on this, but um, um, I think if we click here, we have some interesting comments on uh, people have asked. I don't know if you ever ask to get some more information or additional information from a paper. Uh, sometimes uh, you get a no uh, as an answer, even if the, uh, the journal says uh, everyone should be able to get all the data and all the software. Uh, so here, I think there is one comment. Um, so we email correspondent author and ensemble request, and uh, I think there is only few people who uh, really reply. Most of the time when I ask, I have no reply. It's improving. So here is a, yeah. When you approach a PI for the source code and raw data, you better explain who you are, whom you work for, why you need the data, and what you are going to do with it. Um, I have seen it many times, especially master student asking for, for this. Maybe less, I don't know. I don't know what do you think, Radova? Do we see still? Is it improving? I think this are, it's, it's still a problem, and I've experienced this myself. Yeah. And it's, there's still a long way to go. I mean, and, and journals, they do what they can, but they are not specialists of software. Um, so they, when you publish your paper and you publish along some software, um, nobody is really checking that this is the right software that has really been used. Uh, so it can have some discrepancy between the two and nobody really is checking. So there is a long way to go. Um, but maybe um, let's try to do it properly or let's learn how to, we can do it. Uh, this is the, here like the ideal social coding where you get uh, um, cited by others. Uh, and since you should remember every time you use the software, try to cite and give credit to the people who have developed software. Uh, and at the same time, when you will share your software, um, you can also expect or you would like at least to be cited and to get credit. You will also get cited and credit, but you can also get contribution. And this is what is social coding. But for this, 
uh, your code needs to be shareable. So shareable, it doesn't mean you put it, for instance, on GitHub and that's it. It means you need to define uh, what others can do with your code. And this is where uh, software licenses matter. Uh, and here, something very, very important that sometimes others are yourself in the future in a different group or job in different institution. Um, I think we can remove sometimes because I think the majority of people I have worked with at a university have left university or have moved to other institution. And uh, usually these others, yeah, we are very happy to go and uh, be able to use their code. So this is one of the biggest motivation, I think. Think yeah, about yourself. Great point, because it's maybe the main motivation. So even if, because we don't work in isolation. And was it Aniko who said that, that uh, our more, two most important collaborators in our academic life will be our past self and our future self? Yes, we should add this in big. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I think this is uh, most of the time forgotten. Uh, because when we write a software, we uh, live in the instant, but we forget that we will need it for later. Uh, so what is the motivation for open source software? I, I hope uh, we have gave you some motivation. Uh, the first is to enable derivative work. And we want to uh, see how we can enable derivative work. Do not lock yourself out of your own code. This is, again, what we have seen. Um, and think about that maybe you will not stay in academia. Um, very few permanent positions are researchers. 80% uh, of people will go outside of academia. It's good for your CV. Uh, if you go out and you say, yeah, I have written plenty of codes. And they say, oh, yeah, can you show something? Oh, no, I can't. Uh, it's hidden behind the wall. Um, so this is a bit annoying. Um, and that's a great point, to be able to actually show your work. And that yes. may require to think about license and openness from the start. Yes, and I, I had this issue where I had uh, developed a lot of things in another life, but I never was able to show anything because uh, it was not open source. You are sometimes hard hit by this because nobody can really see what you have done. Code reusability, should you reuse things that others have done? Because so far we have mostly uh, talked about um, sharing uh, your code, but most of the time, at least most of my time, I'm reusing a lot of uh, others' code, uh, which is like main libraries, scientific library, random code of, uh, on the website. So everything you, uh, we have written here, you can reuse. Co copying from Stack Overflow, and uh, we'll see if we have time a bit more in detail how we can do that. Um, but more importantly, what contributes to reusability? Uh, something to think about when you look at a GitHub repository, look at the date of uh, uh, last code change, the release history, the versioning, uh, the number of uh, pull requests, open pull requests and issue. And actually, you can uh, look at open and close to see if there are any activities, uh, any installation instruction, examples, license, contribution guide. Uh, so when we have contribution guide, we also have a code of conduct to avoid uh, unacceptable uh, behavior um, and trust and community. Somebody you trust recommended it. Is it where you are using a software? Most of the time we do that. Um, anything? So before we go on, should I? There are two questions that I could raise from the HackMD if we have time. Sure, yes. And these are really great questions. One question was, and I'm paraphrasing it. So if I'm using a code which uses other libraries and other libraries, uh -huh. how deep should I cite? I mean, should I cite all of them? Should I cite the topmost one? How do they get credit? Um, and so that's maybe question number one. I have another one, but it's a different question. Uh, so what do you do yourself? Yeah. I can... So I, I don't have a perfect answer, but the but I think it's expected that we cite the code that we really use, but I, I, I don't think there can be really an expectation that we cite all the 60 other libraries that are underneath. But then how do they get credit? I think it's then important that they can document metrics 
of how much are they used. As an example, so if I write a code that ends up being in NumPy or SciPy, probably nobody will cite me, like because maybe people will maybe cite NumPy, but not not my work. But maybe it will be very important for me to document metrics that I can show that well my code ended up in NumPy, hence it is used by I don't know sixty thousand people. So it is important. Whether the metrics then actually count is a different story. So that's a bit of a different question. Uh, what is your practice recommendation? Um, uh, I usually try to cite uh, um, like the main, it's a software plus the main libraries behind. Uh, especially if I know this is open source, um, like for instance, NumPy, XRA, or things like that. And I, I want to, to support as part of the paper and uh, I, I believe have an impact for uh, what I'm, uh, I'm publishing. Mm -hmm. And another excellent question and the That's answer right. is difficult yeah. is uh, how do we, when we are reviewing a paper, so when we are referee mm -hmm. and the paper comes and there is yeah. no code, the code is nowhere to be found, it's available upon request, uh, well, how should we, what should we do then? And I think there is no simple answer to it, but I think it's good to think about it and how we can influence. Well, maybe you have a good answer, but I don't have an excellent answer here uh, other than try to push for it, maybe try to influence the editors because maybe we shouldn't punish really the, sometimes we cannot like punish the authors, but I don't know. Yeah, my answer would be a bit like you. I don't think there is good or bad answer. I think if the journal has a policy where um, authors should share, I would ask for the material. Uh, if not, I honestly, I don't think I will review um, this paper because I'm, I'm more on the technical part. And I, uh, when I review paper, um, I expect to have the code and be able to rerun it. But uh, this is because I don't do uh, blue sky research, probably. Um, but I, I think, yeah, I would maybe ask a um, question uh, the editor and uh, ask for his uh, view on it. I, I, again, I don't think there is a good or bad answer, but I think we should try to influence uh, editors on this and try to show that this is important and part of the review process. Um, we'll have an exercise. A 15 minute exercise, which is uh, uh, I would like you to think about like concrete action you can uh, perform on a, on a GitHub repository. So we'll use uh, an existing one, uh, which is the one you have created uh, last week about the guacamole recipe. If you don't have it, you can take that one so you can clone it. Um, there is a guacamole recipe, if you remember, we have ingredients and instruction, and we have a, a small readme file. And uh, I would like to think about how we can uh, favor reuse of this software. So what can we do as a, a developer to facilitate uh, reuse of uh, any of the software? So we have a, a, a few solutions here you can look at. Like uh, I did uh, adding a license and we'll uh, look at uh, more in detail afterward, add a code of conduct, etc. cetera. And uh, uh, maybe try to implement with this, this 15 minute one of this uh, action or one, uh, one uh, item you have uh, discussed and think this is very important. Anything unclear, um, Radovan? No, it's clear. I think I can add uh, that in case this, example feels too far removed from your work, you could also think about your own repository, but it would be good to come up with, as Anne said, like one actionable point to improve reuse. But I think it's also okay to discuss your own repository if you have one. Otherwise you can focus yeah. here on the, on the recipe one, but the, I think the solutions are the same. Yes, and uh, especially if you are in a, in a Zoom in breakout room with all your groups and you're working on the same software, maybe you can look at uh, your report all together and try to implement and start to draft uh, an improvement. Yes. And sure. please take notes in please take notes in the HackMD so that yes. we all see them because it will be interesting to also see the answers from other rooms. So you can add like room number 17 has decent, decent, these recommendations. Yeah, 
not have uh, you won't have time for a thousand of recommendations, but think about what is the most important for your project. Mm -hmm. um, so see if there are no more questions, we can open the breakout room for 15 minutes. And my understanding okay. is that breakout rooms are open. Okay, perfect. Indeed. Thank you. So see you in 15 minutes. Maybe we can put the time on the HackMD. I don't know if um, we should discuss a bit what uh, what would you do rather than what would be your first? So these days also license. Yes. Uh, one of the first things I add. So I think if I start fresh, I, I add a readme, I add a license. Then also very soon, and it's mentioned somewhere there, um, like an example of how to use it, because that's often forgotten, because it's very clear to the person who spends mm. countless hours on using the, using it, so they know. But like an example where I can get started in like five minutes, I can copy paste it and it it shows me how to get started. Yes, I, I would do that. Uh, yeah, I I do like I like you. I will. Uh, at the readme and the license from the very mm. beginning. And mm. now I don't want to work with anyone if they haven't agreed on the license mm. they want to have, even if the repository is closed, I mean, it's private. I want yes. everyone to agree beforehand because otherwise it's endless discussion and we end, end up not sometimes not opening it up because nobody can agree on it. Yes. Then, uh, then example, yeah. I think an example uh, because I, I will forget myself two days mm -hmm. later how to uh, to start the code and yeah. uh, and sorry you had a... so it was also mentioned there environmental file so like requirements.txt or environment demo yes I have seen several times this dependency on how to install installation instruction um, where I think I have seen what you mentioned too yeah. it's probably up yes. And also code of conduct, it's a great point. I often forget about it when the project is really tiny and it's just me, but it, it is good to have it at some point when it grows and when there are more people contributing, I think it's good to have something that applies to communication, pull requests, issues to, to create a working environment. And I, actually that's a very good point because this is uh, usually something which is good to have even if you have a small group because it is like set the tone of uh, of the contribution and if you have like newcomers um they won't be too scared to contribute because uh, they are very often afraid to get comments on their contribution so it's yes. a, i think it's a very good point it's and i didn't mention it because i usually forget sorry <laughs> oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's really really important and speaking of contributions, there is also then a couple of lines below, there's contribution guide. So that's also yes. good, again, for newcomers to know which branch, how to how to contribute changes, what are the expectations, what are the conventions. Yes, that's a very good point. And, I, and now I see more and more like two different guides, like one for more uh, expert and one which is more getting started, um, not to overwhelm uh, newcomers that may not uh, know very well the project and how uh, it already functions. So it's 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 really hard to to start. And I, I think it's it's good suggestion to do that. I don't do it myself. Mm -hmm. I have a good point to have maybe two two different guides. One like technical. Yes, uh, yeah. maybe detailed, but the other one could be what are what are the good first issues, how to get started, how to test, or even how changes. to write an issue. Because I think most mm -hmm. people forget uh, for open science uh, and uh, open software when they have their favorite software and it doesn't work. Um, it's it's good to complain in your office, but it's better if you feel an issue and you explain why it doesn't work in your context. Um, and uh, we forget that as user, we can contribute by uh, explaining 
what we don't like or what is wrong. And in a constructive way, of course. Excellent, thank you, Diana. Yeah, everyone back now. Okay, thank you. So welcome back from your breakout room. Um, we can see many, many good uh, ideas on where to start. Uh, sometimes uh, information about um, how to reuse from the university like, and we'll talk about it a bit later on uh, about licensing. A um, lot of uh, inputs on uh, how to start, where to start. Um, we are discussing with Radovan and we, we uh, agreed more or less that the first thing we do is to uh, add a readme and a license when we create a repository. Um, and then uh, maybe an example on how to use the software or the package. Then I realized that most of the time I, I, I tend to forget to add a, a code of conduct while I think this is super important, even in small groups, especially for, um, I mean, it's very friendly for newcomers. Uh, and it, it says, okay, here you will not be, um, you will be welcome your contribution. We will help you to make it a, a, a contribution, a meaningful contribution that can be added to the repository. So don't be scared. Um, anything else I should I highlight? DOI, uh, ORCID number, which is I've seen somewhere, which I think is a very good idea for author. Very good to get. Yeah, great points. Uh, did we mention example? Uh, uh, yes, some example. Okay. Yeah, tutorial examples, um, how to use it, very important. You can have a, a very polished uh, GitHub repository, but if you don't know uh, what to do to run the software, it's um, not very welcoming. So please add uh, yeah, installation instruction examples. And of course, it depends what uh, your software does, of course and the complexity. Um, I think now we can have a, a short break uh, and then we'll talk about licenses. Because uh, for doing what we have done here, like uh, adding code of conduct, etc., and for sharing, it's only useful if you have a license. Because if you don't have a license, you cannot reuse. This is what we will see afterwards. Um, let's do like what? Four minutes, five minutes break. Sounds good. Five minutes. Yeah. Until 13. Yes. Stretch your leg. Don't 12. stay seated. I will do the same myself. Everyone is back now on. Okay, thank you. So welcome back. I hope you had uh, you stretch your leg. I needed to stretch mine, actually. Um, and uh, I see many a very interesting question and answer in the HackMD about um, different of licenses and uh, like uh, how to get a code of conduct, etc. So things you can uh, read afterwards, but many of these uh, uh, aspects we'll discuss now with licenses. Um, because um, as I said before the break, if you don't have a license in a repository, you cannot use this, uh, the repository or the software in the repository. So no license is no usage. Um, so before introducing uh, licenses, we'll uh, discuss a bit more from a general point of view. Um, and we'll start with intellectual property and uh, um, make the distinction between free software, open software, licenses, and the different types of, of uh, licenses and what you can uh, use in your work. Uh, so if we start with uh, intellectual property, um, there is not one type of intellectual property, there are several ones. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, by default, when you create a repository, there are always some uh, copyright, for instance, which is one type of uh, uh, intellectual property. We, uh, and the copyright will protect, will protect the creative expression. So for software, uh, it will create um, it, it will uh, it will be added. I think even if you don't add it yourself, it is by default. Am I am I correct, Radovan? Yes. So even if nothing is specified, yeah, it is there is a copyright. Um, so 
how do we handle, for instance, for university, when you work for university copyright are most of the time, um, the university copyright, I guess, and not yourself? Yes, depending on country on your, and, yeah. uh, and organization, but most often than not, it's the employer. Yeah, so I think in, uh, in Sweden, this is a bit different. Um, I'm not sure in, in Finland, but at least in Norway for researcher, uh, this is uh, copyright is a university. Um, so you have also like patents, but um, I think still patents in, uh, in, in Europe are not uh, uh, available for software. Uh, another type of, uh, of intellectual properties, a trademark uh, to protect the name or a brand, like if we wanted to protect code refinery, uh, we, would not, uh, we would have to, um, to request a, a trademark, a name for it, uh, and we have to pay, I think. And I'm not sure how much it is, but it's not free, if I'm correct. Um, the most important, oh, sorry, Ravan, you wanted to mention something? Oh, no, just confirming that, Yeah. what you said. OK, thanks. Um, so for copyright, we said you will always have it by default, if you, even if you don't specify anything. It is automatically created. Um, and the derivative works, which is all about uh, uh, creating new content from an existing repository, is uh, usually you inherit the copyright from, uh, uh, from the things you derive. So it's uh, intangible, it will not change. Um, and uh, for the time frame, there is no limits. It means this is usually forever. So once you have it, it doesn't change. I mean, it says lifetime plus X year, but um, the X year isn't really defined. So this is more or less forever for the lifetime of the code which usually dies anyway at some point. Uh, when can you use? So as I said before, if you don't have a license, you cannot reuse. So don't reuse any software if there is no license. If there is no license, you can request the developer to add one, but don't use a, uh, the software. So you need to have a license, but the license need to specify that you can reuse because there are different types of licenses and some of them are very restrictive. Otherwise, this is limited. It's only for yourself. Um, and in practice, we know that people do many things, but um, at the end, you can't really share your output if you um, haven't looked at this from the very beginning. Um, so when you, we write or use software, copyright licenses and derivative works are important concept. And this, this is the most important one we need to understand to be able to reuse. So what we call derivative work is changing, remixing and covering. So for instance here, is it a derivative work? So Radovan, is it derivative work? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sure. And Sorry. I can also raise here a point from Hackenby. Yeah. I think great point is that there is a lot of emphasis on open science, open source, fair, etc. But what is often missing in our universities are clear guidelines on how to do it. Absolutely. And uh, this is where um, we will see afterwards about the derivative work. Um, they have lots of principle, but because they are mixing uh, data with software, they have very little principle for software, uh, for open science and fair software. Um, and this is an issue. And we know this is an issue. We are trying to uh, overcome this issue. So we are trying to, here to give you some guidelines on how to proceed. But we don't have uh, like the solution. So what we, we think is very important is to understand what is derivative work is when you build on something, you form a derivative work. So when you build on a, a software, uh, you will uh, create some derivative work. So the original creator still have rights or most of, most of the time have rights, depending on the license. Um, the whole point of this talk is to make sure you understand what you can make and publish. And that derivative work and others can make and publish the derivative works from you. So it's, what we would like if we are in the context of open science is to make sure what we do can be reused and also to make sure what we use ourselves, we are allowed to use it. Uh, so um, let's try to answer to this question. If, uh, if we download some code from a website and add on it, 
um, is it derivative work or not? And should I answer or? Uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> I will try to answer. You. All right, that's <laughs> and we that's can iterate. I don't think we here. have time to do more than yeah. this. So I would say, yes, that's a derivative work because I take something and I'll change it. Yes, and I think if we, for instance, download some code and use one of the function in your code, it will be very similar. Yes, unless this is, maybe actually we have a different question. So there is a different question than question seven. So unless it's question seven, yeah, it, yes, it is also derivative work, even if yeah. I just take part of it and change it. It's a bit like with music, I mean, remixing music, Take, taking a sample out of a different song and resampling it, it's still derivative work. Yes. And I, I think the, the example of music is a very good example because then you can relate for most of this uh, and you can uh, decide. If you're changing the code you got from somewhere, um, extended code you got from somewhere, it will be similar. Yes, and also uh, question number five, which by completely rewriting the code into a different language, actually five and six. Yeah, five and six are the and that was uh, that was surprising to me because I somehow thought that, well, if I change absolutely everything, there is nothing recognizable from the yeah. original code. I thought that this would not be derivative work, but in fact, this was derivative work because yeah. in the process of doing so, I have been reusing the original code and it helped me debugging, testing, uh, yeah. verifying. So also that is derivative work. So for instance, changing variables names are still derivative work, which I've seen many times people are changing variable names and they think this is not derivative work. Mm -hmm. Uh, cl cl clean room design is actually is very hard. So it, it, this is where it would not be derivative work, but it's very, very hard because we are yeah. most of the time inspired by what we have read and we have seen. And we also jumped over seven. So seven would yeah. possibly not be derivative work if we only link to. So just because I'm using NumPy library yes. doesn't make my code automatically a derivative work of NumPy. Yes. Unless I really went in and copy pasted some function out of it. Yes, sir, you're right. Um, and if you read a paper, understand the algorithm, and write your own code? Oh, well, we still have to cite, but that is then not, that is a bit similar to the clean room design. It's not really yeah. derivative work if, if there is because no code, algorithm yeah. is not copyrighted. Yeah. Uh, and, we, and now that we usually give the code along the paper, it will become harder and harder because we'll have the code. Um, so why uh, could allowing derivative work be good for you? I think this is the same reason we have seen before, so I will not go back to it. Uh, it really uh, can give you more impact and more citation. Um, one thing I want to mention is what is free software, and uh, um, there is a, some confusion between free software. That is, doesn't mean this is free, free in terms of uh, money. Um, and uh, uh, for instance, open source licenses doesn't mean you need to share everything immediately. Uh, so this is very common not to share, uh, only to share like the public, there is a public version and not a public version. Um, and the open source doesn't mean public domain, uh, open source does not mean non-commercial. And uh, actually there are many and more and more companies uh, open source all their, all their uh, codes. There is very few left uh, companies where their business model is to make money uh, with software. I'm not yes, so because successful anymore. I mean, companies have recognized that they can get yeah. a lot of work for free. Exactly. And that's the social coding. It. Yes, mm -hmm. you are absolutely right. I mean, the, this social coding means that you get contributor from outside contributor, not from your company, from free. This is great. Um, here we have a, like, uh, how do we choose a license? So we have a, a bit of taxonomy of uh, software licenses. Uh, like the first one would be uh, the least open. Uh, and this is a custom and closed. I truly recommend you to avoid this. Never try to uh, create your license yourself. I have seen many times, it's very hard then to mix with other software. So really um, this, I, I would put a red cross on it. Then you have the permissive uh, uh, licenses like MIT, which is very common in academia, BSD and Apache. Uh, and uh, here, for instance, we put uh, the different um, 
what you can do. And this is what you see with through the license. So this is really good when you choose a license to see what you are allowed to do. For instance, commercial use, distribution, modification, and private use. What are the conditions? So here it means you need to put the license and uh, the copyright so you cannot remove it and the liability and the warranty. Usually there is none for most of these very permissive licenses. Um, and the same like this uh, weak copyleft and share likes, which is the condition. And uh, for instance, when you would like to get uh, the changes or at least you want to be aware of the changes. So this is very useful uh, licenses. Uh, the, the, the strong copy deck share like the GPL and AGPL. Um, I don't use very often. What is the difference uh, actually? The AGPL, you mean? Yes. And and that the, would be for. Uh, so the difference is that if I do derivative work, I have oh, to yes, share everything. Yeah. And the AGPL part is interesting if you do like a web service. So then, even though people don't, so so making it available as a web service actually means sharing code. That's right. It's a good point. Yes, I didn't think about that, probably because I don't do that. Yes. So we have uh, five minutes left, yeah. actually four minutes left. Um, um, one reminder is that at the bottom of HackMD, I already placed in a uh, scaffold awesome. for the feedback. Yeah. So let us know something that was particularly good today, one thing that we should change, remove, improve. And in the remaining four or five minutes, maybe we can look at the practical recommendations to Yes, exactly. So I wanted to go through the practical recommendation uh, here, um, which is again to repeat, you cannot ignore licenses. So default is uh, you cannot do anything. Uh, license your code very early. And uh, as I said before, um, the best is uh, when you start the repository, you think about it and you add a license, even if this is a private repository. Don't postpone it. It will have a lot of trouble. I have seen so many times. Um, very good practice to add files like contributing.md and code of conduct, we have seen. And we have here some good example on uh, how to write contributing guidelines and code of conduct, uh, take uh, an existing code of conduct usually we, we use. When we have a code of conduct, what is good is to have a procedure to report, otherwise this is not so useful. Um, take uh, open software, uh, what means OZI? I don't remember. <laughs> I think open source initiative or open like source that. initiative. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Approve license, which is what we have shown so far. Uh, and do not design your custom license. So it's, I think that's probably the most important. Open source your code. Uh, this is for yourself, your past and your future. Uh, this is uh, probably the best advice we can give you. Um, what else I wanted to maybe just mention this about the software citation. I will not go through, but I would like to, to mention it for later as a reference. We are now and more and more trying to uh, improve citation of software. We are not at the fair software yet, but we are working on it. And this is a very interesting part to look at how we can uh, ease the citation as when you cite a paper, you can cite a software. So make it as easy as possible. So there is now um, software citation uh, software citation file format, uh, quite simple, where you can add the information uh, about uh, the author and uh, uh, the DUI, uh, the release version, the name, etc. Very easy to copy past in your in in your paper. Uh, and that's it for my side. Uh, rather than do you want to add or do I miss something super important? I just wanted to say that we have lots of resources there. Also, if you scroll down, I think on this yes. page, there is a lot of other reading, yes. other reading. So there is a lot out there. I also see that many questions came over HackMD. That's wonderful. And we will maybe after like a short break, we will follow up on all of them. So they will get answered. Yes. And I wonder whether the whether Diana, the host, wants to have some final words before we close the session. <laughs> 